What's up guys, I'm Daria. Glad to see you in our new tutorial on the Mavavi channel. Ready? Let's get started. Stand on tiptoe, to the side, to the center, to the side. The second exercise, come on! Move it, faster, move it, come on! Here goes the third one, come on! Try harder, good job! That's right, well done! Wanna learn how we made this video that looks like something from the 90s? Now we are about to time travel through two decades and tell you all about it. And don't panic! Nope, we didn't change the Mavabe vlog profile to a retro fitness channel. I'm still talking about shooting and editing videos. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own video in the style of the 90s. It may not be easy, but it sure will be interesting. Do you remember those good old days when people used to visit each other with the sole purpose of copying videotapes or just sitting around and watching a movie together? There was something delightful about it, right? People would get to know each other, communicate with one another, share news, and have some quality time offline. Well, actually, on second thoughts, I doubt they used the word offline back then. Perhaps that is what gives you such warm feelings whenever you watch old video recordings. It brings many of us back to our childhood or formative years. But there are some people who didn't experience this era at all, the last offline decade. At the beginning of the 90s, the first portable video cameras became available. Ever since that moment, it's been not just film studios that shoot videos, but ordinary people as well. Because of this broader availability, we can enjoy both watching movies and ads from that time and looking at the way people lived and entertained themselves then. The typical features of cameras, data storage devices and TV sets in those years shaped a particular visual style. There is just no way to confuse it with something from a different time. You can instantly recognize the characteristic elements. Tilted horizon, jerky zoom, distorted images from a videotape, stripes and a timecode in the corner. Check out the way our retro-style fitness video would look like if there was no 90s stylization. Now, scrolling down your newsfeed, this type of video wouldn't even make you stop. If you feel like taking advantage of all this hype about 90s nostalgia, you don't have to buy an old film camera. Let's figure out what makes this video so recognizable. How can we recreate the unique style from the end of the last century? Let's start with the way the video is shot. We watched a dozen videos from that time and noticed a few recurring operator habits. A sudden zoom. Everyone loved to do this, from TV camera operators to the lucky owners of amateur cameras. There is a master shot, and all of a sudden here is an abrupt transition to a close-up with the help of the zoom. If your lens has zoom capabilities, you can do this trick yourself. Just check that the subject doesn't drop out of focus in the close-up. Here is how it looks. You can repeat this trick on your mobile phone. As with the camera, I recommend using a tripod or a monopod. Another fashionable technique of those years was a deliberately tilted horizon – almost 45 degrees. You can even combine both of these techniques in one scene. But don't overdo it. Of course, for a retro video you need to pick the right scene, so it reminds you of the 90s. We've chosen a fitness video. You remember all those jazz girls and boys in tight outfits, right? Pick your topic? Don't forget the details, because it's important to match the era as closely as possible. Put those skinny jeans aside. It's time to get your father's old sports jacket and your mother's leggings out of the closet. Now we have the scene set up. It's time to start editing. But first, a couple of words about the technical characteristics of video production at the end of the last century. A standout technical feature of videos of that era is black bars on each side. In the 90s, a 4 to 3 aspect ratio was the standard for video recording and TV broadcasts. It wasn't until the 2000s, with the transition to digital television, that the ratio began to change to today's 16 to 9. Also, you may notice the image quality is rather poor. The VHS video tape format, which was widely used back then, supported a resolution of only 320 to 240 pixels. For comparison, the usual format for us on YouTube and in this video is a resolution of 1920 to 1080 pixels. Now the VHS effect is mostly associated with the so-called old film effect. VHS stands for Video Home System. It's an analog video recording format, which was first introduced in Japan in 1976. 
It became popular in the 80s with the appearance of the first VHS players and VCRs, and it wasn't until the 2000s that it was replaced by DVD players. By the way, the production of VHS tapes and VCRs stopped only recently, in 2016. Noise, stripes, and a range of issues caused by TV interference and film problems add to the atmosphere. The reason for tapes wearing out was frequent copying. When rewriting the tape, the quality tended to drop sharply, noise and distortion appeared, and as nitrofilm was expensive, it was often overwritten. I'm going to recreate all the features I've mentioned during the editing. Let's open Mavave Video Editor and upload the videos. I'll skip the part where I edited the videos from raw clips and go straight to the most interesting part. Just in case, in the description I've left you the link to our tutorial on the basics of video editing. Watch it first if you're new to video editing. Now let's change the aspect ratio from today's 16 to 9 to the 90s standard. Go to the project settings. You can choose from one of the templates with the 3 to 4 aspect ratio. Or set it manually. That's what I'll do. Allow changing the aspect ratio and enter 1440 in the box for the frame width. This way we get the desired aspect ratio of 3 to 4. To remove the black bars from the top and bottom of the frame, select the clip in the crop tool. The program will offer to crop the frame to the desired format. Click Apply. These actions will need to be repeated for each clip, if you have more than one. Next, I exported the finished video, without introducing any effects. This way, it'll be more convenient to work on the video further. Click Export and select the desired quality. So, I've created a new project and reloaded the already edited video. To make the video look as if it was shot by your grandmother, you can use the filters built into the editor. Try different combinations, for example, old movie 70s and old movie scratches. Not bad! But if you want to achieve a truly spectacular effect, then I suggest you create it manually. I'm going to go for this effect. Note that this is not just a deterioration in quality by reducing the resolution and adding artificial scratches and defects. An attentive eye can see here double or even triple outlines of different shades. The thing is that all the colors we see on the screen are a mixture of three color channels – red, green and blue. If you've ever engaged in drawing or painting, you have probably learned that you can create any color if you mix the three primary colors – red, yellow and blue – in the right proportions. However, in the digital world the green color is used instead of yellow due to the way light, as opposed to paint, mixes. Non-matching color channels appeared when people recorded video on ordinary home video recorders, which, due to technological shortcomings, could not accurately reproduce the picture. Now I'm going to tell you how I managed to achieve this effect. Remove the previously added effects, copy the video track and place it above the main one. Turn off the sound on the additional track. Click Edit and select the Cover option. Add a couple of effects. Set the value of the opacity much lower, about 20%, to make the effects a little less intense. We'll make one more copy of the track and place it above the original. Press Edit and stretch it to fit the mainframe. We don't need any particular accuracy here. Add the color mix blue effect and slightly reduce the transparency of the layer. Now move the picture slightly to the right. Then copy the last layer. When inserting it, ensure that the playhead is at the beginning of the timeline, so that the clips will be synchronized. Change the filter to color mix red. Click Edit and move to the layer to just above the original clip. You see? We have a small color stratification of the frame and have achieved the desired fuzziness. Also, on the edges of the frame, colored stripes have appeared. 
very similar to the way film stock appeared. By adjusting the opacity of these layers, you can change the intensity of the effect. But that's not all. Create another copy of the top layer and remove all the effects from it except the opacity. Now place it in line with the original clips and cut it into three parts. These are the places where we will add noise. Choose these segments on the video. Remember, change the length of the clips only by dragging by the edges, otherwise you'll break the synchronization. I'll choose these three clips, but you can make as many as you want. On the first one, I'll add the VHS effect. Let's see how it looks. Super! Now I want the effect to overlap only part of the frame. I select the second clip and the crop tool. I narrow the area to the desired size and press apply. Then I click edit and move the area to the desired position. Now again add the VHS effect. In my opinion, the effect is too long here, so I'll make it shorter. Now the effect is applied only to the desired area. We repeat the same actions with the third segment. But during the editing, we stretch the segment a bit to recreate another filmed effect. Let's add a few bars. I asked our designer to make this picture with bars. We place it above all the previous layers, stretch the entire length of the video, click Edit, select the Picture-in-Picture -picture option and stretch it so that the bars overlap the whole image. Set the opacity. Perfect! Just look how our picture has changed. As we finish our work with effects, we will add to our original track the vignette and old movie scratches effects. Just a couple of things left to do, starting with text inserts. Go to Titles, choose Simple Text and enter the date of this memorable event. For greater accuracy, we use the VCR OSD Mono font. The link to download this font is in the description. Copy the layer and add some text from the camera interface. And let's add a timecode. For that, I use timer title. In the settings, let's make the background transparent. A quick life hack for you. To align the text horizontally or vertically, you can uncheck the viewing monitor by clicking this button and using the screen border as a ruler. Ready! Let's see once more how our video changed. This is the original video. Here we changed the aspect ratio and added several effects from the program. And here we manually recreated the desired effect. Are you tired yet? Creating these kinds of effects is a little laborious, but I think you'll agree the result is worth it. By the way, if you were paying attention, the voiceover in our clip Mm, is not really in sync with the video. That's not an accident, because in those years there were no compact recording devices, so the voice was recorded by overdubbing. Do you want to know how to do this? In this video we talk about all the nuances. Tell us in the comments if you like the tutorial and if you want to learn even more advanced editing techniques. Subscribe to our channel and don't miss exciting new tutorials. See you in the next Movave video. Bye-bye!